So we were called out to a hive that's inside a stack of tires. Uh, it's on Liz's property. She's there with Brennan, Dante, and Avery. She found it very interesting. And right now we're smoking them a little bit, trying to figure out what what's in the tires as far as how much, how far down they go, and so on and so forth. So I've noticed there's comb on the top side of this tire, on the rim. So I'll place that right in front of me. And cut the comb at the edge of the tire rim there. This, I believe, had a little bit of brood on it. So it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle when you start cutting these and trying to place them on your frame with the rubber bands. The rubber bands actually help hold the comb on the frame. Later on, they'll attach it to the frame itself. They'll just extend a piece of comb up there with wax and connect it right to the frame itself. But it does become quite a jigsaw puzzle, we might say, trying to get the little pieces incorporated into the frame, placing the rubber bands on there and whatnot. Although it looks like a lot of bees there, it's, they weren't very aggressive at all. My wife, who's also videotaping, was standing there with Liz, talking to her about the the bees and the queen bee and why they leave and so on and so forth. Why do they swarm? Why do they go to other locations? I just found that to be very interesting. Here you can see I'm trying to fit those pieces of that jigsaw puzzle together as far as the pieces of comb. Getting them into the frame. One of them things you just got to be patient with. Eventually it all comes together. Just take it piece by piece and here I'm actually just setting it in the frame. I mean in the in the nuke box. Had a lot of bees on that, so if the queen was on there, hopefully she'll stay in the nuke box nuke box. And 
and shaking some of those bees into the nuke box. And getting another frame ready with the rubber bands. After a while, between all the honey and the bees and so on and so forth, a lot of stuff just becomes sticky. The rubber bands are coated with honey and we get some rogue groups of bees just working on little pieces of honey here and there. There's some close-ups of the inside of the tire. When you're working with bees like this, the main thing is to try to get as much as you can inside there. Hopefully you see the queen and actually put her inside the nuke box. If you're lucky enough to do that, the rest of the bees pretty much will go into the nuke box. But if you don't actually see her and put her in there, the chances are you will get her by just continuing the process. The smoke is also helping keeping helping keeping the bees calm. Shaking them down into the nuke box piece by piece. Continue putting that puzzle together, you might say. Hopefully when I get all this done, we'll have bees marching right into the nuke box because the queen's in there. Try to get as much pieces of that comb actually into the frame as we can. Mainly the ones that either have honey or brood attached actually on the comb. The empty comb isn't real important. It does make their new home more like their pieces of furniture, you might say, or their kitchen. <laughs> so, makes their environment resemble more what they're used to, even if it is empty comb. But it's not real important to get put the empty comb in the, in the box. Once you get them all into the brood box itself and they start progressing into the once you get them home and in the apiary you really want to progress the comb that's you have kind of a, out of the box and you put comb foundation in there and let them start building on that which is much more manageable and they'll build comb on that really nice and straight and the queen will be able to lay eggs real easy in a fresh new comb. And by feeding them through the top of the box, 
with sugar, water, and so on, it actually promotes that. Here I'm just shaking them and brushing them down into the box. All the beads you can see on the bottom of the tire there. It just takes patience. All the patience gives you the reward of their honey and you can enjoy the honey and give it to your friends and so on and so forth. It is quite amazing they make such a product where nature gives it to you. Put a bunch of them on the front of the tire there and you just picked them up and put them right in the nuke box. I'm going to get another frame ready, putting the rubber bands on it. The smoker seems to be working well. It's almost taking care of the bees on its, on its own without having to utilize pump in it or anything else. There's a close-up picture of the rim of the tire. And just peel away some of the comb from that part. Looked like we had a bee trying to photobomb there moments ago. The bees are pretty much just confused right now, looking for the queen flying around, don't know what's going on. And the smoke is keeping them calm too. Inside these tires was a bunch of sticks and stuff that some other animals put in there that they were trying to make a nest also. So it was like a couple little families in there, you might say, a colony of bees and whatever was collecting the nuts and whatnot. They seemed to be living together in harmony though, so didn't see what the other critter was. I suspect it's possibly a squirrel or something like that. Shaking the stuff off the sticks and or the bees off the stick and getting as many of those bees into the new box as possible. And we got more comb on the back side of this rim. That looks to be a lot newer comb, see how nice and white it is. The 
real little pieces are really hard to put in the uh, frame with the rubber bands even. Sometimes the larger pieces actually break apart, but it's all about being patient. There's a nice larger piece that shake some of them beads down in there and looks like they're actually going down in there themselves. It is quite possible the queen is already in there. All the time you're kind of reminding yourself to look for the queen because you wouldn't want to damage the queen. Sometimes you gotta set a few pieces of that puzzle aside for making room for the bigger pieces. Well, all these bees you see flying around there will eventually be in that nuke box. And they will appreciate their new home. setting up another frame to put more comb in. I actually brought an eight frame box with me just in case it was larger. You really don't know what you're getting into. Where I would need a total of eight frames to box there or that I'm using is a five frame nuke box. But I normally work with eight frame as far as the apiary goes where I raise the bees. For some reason, when you raise bees, it's better to have to start them out in a smaller, bo smaller box and let them grow into the bigger boxes. I think it's a matter of them being able to defend the area. I always say it's kind of like potted plants. You start out with a small pot and graduate them into the larger pot. Mm, getting some larger pieces of cone now. There's still a bunch of bees on that rim. And it looks like I might have got stung right then. If you pinch them, you do get stung through those gloves, but most of the time you don't, unless you actually get them like between your fingers or something like that. They do have gloves where you wouldn't get pinched, but I prefer these. They're easier for me to work with and pick things up and whatnot. I'm probably looking for the queen right there. I 
as is my wife. She's looking for the queen as well. When we inspect our boxes in the apiary, we always look for the queen, but you don't have to find the queen to know you have a good hive box. You can see that there's egg formations. You can see that there's larvae. You can see that there's cat brood. That's all indications of a healthy hive and that you have a healthy queen. There is some math to verify that, you know, with the amount of eggs the queen can lay and so on and so forth. And you can just basically add up the amount of cat brood you have. And that's one indication. Cat brood is, you know, so many days times the amount of days she's laid eggs. So, and how long they're capped, and you multiply that, and so on and so forth. They can lay around 2,500 eggs a day. So, if you see a lot of eggs, you have a healthy queen. And look at all those bees. And if I seen a, a group of bees clustered kind of like down at the bottom of that tower there, I'd be looking for the queen in there, which we are. Because they seem to gravitate around her in situations. The wife is all in there with no gloves on, being all brave and whatnot. If you are lucky enough to find the queen and put her in there, it's kind of fun to watch the other bees just march right in. The smoke will also send them running into the box, basically. There's bits and pieces of comb left on those tires. And setting them aside, the bees still kind of gravitate towards that to find out where their home is, basically. So with the amount of bees I have in there, I'd like to keep them in there. And now the bees will pick up on the scent probably from the front if the queen is in there. The other bees will actually go to the front of the hive. Some of them, once they know the queen's in there, will actually face the hive and fan their, uh, their wings to get the scent out. So is basically signaling the other bees that, hey, she's in here, and this is our new home. So they try to communicate that way with the, I believe it's the pheromones from the queen, and it actually smells like lemongrass. Some people say it smells like pledge or lemongrass. But eventually they'll 
the on the stoop or the stoop of the uh, nuke box there, and they will be fanning backwards the the scent or the smell, and that will tell the other bees, hey, this is our new home. That was a bunch of some sort of nuts that something had put in the tires. Just trying to clean up a little bit so you can shake those last remaining bees off and kind of brush them down in front of the hive box. There's a bunch of them in the back of the box there for some reason. Probably some that fell off the tire back there and they're still looking for where they're supposed to be. There's sticks and debris and stuff that fell off the tire in front of the box. I'm actually looking to see if there is any of the, the bees. They all have their butts up in the air with their wings flapping, trying to put that scent out. Some of the bees are still clustering where the old comb was, thinking that's still their home. They'll eventually find out their new home is in that nuke box. Where the rag is at the very top is where we put a feeder eventually. And we feed them some sugar water so they can get their comb built up. And they'll eventually grow into an eight frame hive box and possibly two stacks of that and then there'll be a what we call a honey super on top of that and they'll start making honey they make honey in the actual brood boxes normally on the outside walls they actually use that on the outside walls the honey to insulate I believe the the brood and they normally keep the brood towards the center of the hive boxes so if you open up a hive box normally you got your honey on the outside walls and the brood and the queen and all that will be towards the center but with bees it's not always the same they, bees do what bees do but normally it's like that So we're just watching them settle down a little bit. The other little hole in the top of that box is actually a stainless steel screen that allows air in there. I'm going to straighten out those frames a little better and Organize it a little better. See how the bees are forming on top of that. And brush those off. Tell them where their new home is. They're still believing that's their home in, in the tires. But they're also looking for the queen which is more than likely in that nuke box. So I'll put the lid back on and keep an eye on things and 
wash that front porch for the bees to start fanning the scent of the queen. There's the one and a bunch of them in the back. I'm moving towards the front so they can actually gravitate into the or make their way into the nuke box. Like I said, there was a bunch of stuff in the in the wheels itself, like nuts and sticks and so on and so forth. I did save some of the actual uh, honey from the hive and gave that little bit to the owner. And I believe the uh, young lady, I think it was the granddaughter, I think her name is Avery, she tried some of it. Either that or the honey that I actually gave them. I had some little jars of honey and little teddy bear jars. But uh, I heard her telling the neighbor kid that she tasted it and it was really good. So that's always rewarding too. But uh, here you can see some of the bees actually working their way in. I'm cleaning it up so they can have a nice clean path and we can see what's going on. And the bees are just wondering, how do they get in there? See, some of them are actually hovering behind the, underneath the handle there, to, or the top of the box. But it does look like some of them are figuring it out. They're actually landing in front of the board there, going in. And what we do is we actually leave this box there till, till the sundown, basically, and all the foraging bees will come back and they'll all go in there also. So we wouldn't take it now because they're out. And it's a warm day. They don't even know that this is happening. They're out somewhere gathering pollen or nectar and they'll be bringing it back, but they'll figure it out because the bees will be on the front stoop saying, hey, she's in here fanning, fanning those pheromones. It's always fun to watch that front porch on the hive box. Once they do start walking in there, Looks like I was cleaning up some of the debris that fell in the front there. Giving them a free path to go in. Yeah, it looks like it's progressing as far as the ones that are deciding to go in and they're actually catching the scent. It looks like some of them are actually stopped out front there, and that's the other, more than likely the ones that are kind of anchored and they're just fanning their wings to get that scent out. Let the other ones know that the queen is in there. You'll see a few more get anchored and start fanning that air.
and they'll have their butts up in the air with their wings flapping and promote that scent to go out and let the other bees know that, hey, mom's in here. This is where we live now. So in a little while you'll see them get more aggressive as far as going in there. There's a lot of bees just around on the ground, wondering where to go, basically. They haven't got the memo, you might say. There's normally, 99% of the time, there's only one queen to a colony. And unless it's like a huge building or something they're in, that's just only one queen. So they're all looking for their mom. They're actually all siblings, you might say, of that queen. As you notice, it looks like more and more of them are getting anchored on the front porch. And those are ones doing their job to let the rest of the bees know, hey, this is the way. If you notice, they're starting to go in a lot faster. They're figuring it out. Hey, mom's in here, folks. Normally I'll either put a piece of cardboard down or a blanket or something like that so you can see the progression more easily. These bees will go back to the apiary and They'll get fed that sugar water and get healthy. Start building some more comb. Seems like more and more of the foraging bees are coming back too because there's a lot of bees in the air. And they must be confused, so where's my stack of tires? But the other bees are letting them know where by sending that scent up. And they're finding that and going in. And less and less bees are underneath the handle there, so they're figuring it out also. And you can see the quicker migration. Of the bees into the box. Yeah, at one point I do speed up the video to actually show the bees' movement a little bit better. And in a few moments we'll see just that. And the 
there's a lot more bees finding out where the queen is. And I'm going to get a little bit closer on this as far as watching the bees go in. And there it is, a little bit faster. But you can see them, like I was saying, anchored with their butts in the air, making, making sure everyone can smell that scent from the queen inside. <laughs> And like I said, this gets left behind until later on in the evening, and we'll come back and get those and take them back to the apiary. But now you can see them really going in. They are definitely finding out where the queen is. You can see them running across that cardboard pretty much. And if you like this video, please hit the like. And uh, if you would, hit subscribe. I enjoy making these videos. Once you're into beekeeping, it becomes addictive. And you like to help and show other people how the bees are and what bees do and how to, how to collect bees and whatnot. It is quite an interesting hobby, and it's a fun one. And it does have its rewards. See a lot of bees going in, very few coming out. They were trying to get everything organized inside, I'm sure. They're all tagging in, you might say. Finding out what's going on. They're actually probably figuring out how to attach that comb, where the comb needs to be worked on. where their storage of honey is and food and where their brood is that they'll have to tend to. So once again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Please hit like and subscribe and have a great day.